Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year 2022. Before we get to our teaching on the power to choose, I wanted to kind of turn back the clock so that all of you can hear what our Father's heart sounded like about 15 years ago. I hope you enjoy. Welcome to our Father's Heart. A family homepage owned and operated by the Ruiz family. Our utmost desire is to be in the Father's Heart, to know the Father's Heart, and express the Father's Heart to you. The family are in. Yep, that was us about 15 years ago. But now on to the teaching. Remember, though, be blessed in the hearing, but more so in the doing of God's Word. The vision received was that of blood cells traveling throughout the body, supplying the much needed oxygen and other nutrients to the differing members of the body to fulfill their purpose. Once the blood cells are spent, they must return back to the heart to be refilled before being sent out again and fulfill their purpose. Thank you, Bishop. Bishop uh, spoke about the Garden of Eden, and that's kind of where I want to start off with, uh, because the Garden of Eden has been on my mind for, for quite some time, and I felt like I needed to kind of look back on what transpired there. I think I've touched upon it in other teachings in times past, but something was, was set there that, that I, I don't know, it's just kind of echoed, it's reverberated in my mind, and it hasn't gone away. But something was established in the Garden of Eden. A power. I said a power was given unto man in the Garden of Eden. It says in Genesis 2 that the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. And there it was. Something was established. And a power was given unto man. And that power was to decide. To choose. He didn't just make a robot. He didn't just program something to do exactly what he said to do, like we program our computers to do exactly what we program them to do. He gave man power to decide for himself, will he choose to obey his own creator or not? The power to choose. What will you do when you hear his voice? We know what Adam and Eve did. They heard his voice. They heard what they could and could not do. Their responsibilities. All these things were given to them. And then it was left to them to decide for themselves whether they would freely of themselves to obey his voice or not. And when you read through the scriptures, if you keep that in mind, you realize that that test, if you will, that opportunity has been given to every person that God has called. Every man created has been called and given that same opportunity. When Abraham was called, his name was Abram. And when he was called in Genesis 12, God said to him, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless you. 
Though I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I'm giving you the opportunity because I'm calling you, Abraham. You hear me clearly. What are you going to do? Abram, what are you going to do? We know Abraham's testimony. He left his father. He left his mother. He left his country. And he went on a journey to a place that he knew not of. Moses, called by God. He said, come now, therefore, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. You're going to bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt in Exodus 3.10. God called Moses. Moses had a decision to make. What am I going to do with this word I just heard from a burning bush that isn't consumed? What am I going to do with this voice that says he is the God of all creation? If it were not for Moses obeying and choosing to follow after what God had told him to do, we would have never known Moses to be the servant that was faithful in his house. And neither would Moses have ever known that he was a faithful servant in God's house had he not obeyed the voice of the Lord. It says in Hebrews, and Moses indeed was a faithful in all of his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken of afterward. He called Gideon. He said to Gideon through the angel of the Lord that came under and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, to Azrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide from the Midianites. Because at that time, they were being oppressed by the Midianites. And the angel said and appeared to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Calling Gideon. And Gideon is now given the same opportunity that was given in the very Garden of Eden. Hear my voice. What are you going to decide for yourself? I know you don't see that you're a mighty man of valor, but I'm calling you a mighty man of valor. Now it's up to you whether you're going to walk in my calling or not. And after some trepidation, like Moses, it's not like Moses was like, oh, gung-ho, I'm going to follow after Moses. He had his doubts. He had his concerns about how he spoke and whether he would be able to do what God wanted him to do with such a high and mighty thing. I'm going to go before the Pharaoh and all of his, his, this nation and take out all these millions of people that are the people of God. And Gideon was the same. What do you mean mighty man of valor? We are under the oppression of the Midianites. What are you talking about? And he told him some more, but at the end of the day, Gideon had to decide this voice of the Lord that I just heard from this angel that consumed this, 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 this offering that I brought before him. Am I going to obey this voice or not? It wasn't always positive either. I mean, Adam and Eve wasn't a positive outcome. We're all suffering from the effects of that but you know abraham yeah yeah that 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 ended out really well moses yeah yeah that ended out really well gideon yes that ended out really well he he delivered the people of god from the oppression that they were in and i think it was for about 40 years they had peace but didn't always end up that way there was a particular man of god from the southern kingdom that was called to go into the northern kingdom of Israel when it was divided. And he was supposed to prophesy upon an altar against King Jeroboam, the king. He was supposed to speak a prophecy against the king of Jeroboam. He could have stayed where he was at in the southern kingdom and said, I don't know about that. 
That northern kingdom is off their rocker. I, I don't know if I need to go there and do that in front of the king, but he did it. He went to the altar. He pronounced the prophecy. The king had his hand withered, and then it was restored by the man of God. But the man of God was also told something particular. He decided, I'm going to do what God said. He went and he did what God said. But God said one other thing. Don't come back from the way you came, and don't drink or eat anything along the way or on the way back. Well, he got to the place where he needed to. He fulfilled that part of what was commanded of him, and he even left by another way to go back to his home. But then another prophet from Bethel came to him and invited him to his house to come and eat with him. And there the opportunity is laid before this man of God again. Are you going to listen to my voice? Or are you going to listen to this other man who's claiming himself to be a prophet of God? He started to say no. But if you've read the story in 1 Kings 13, he went to that prophet's house. He ate, sat down with him. And the prophet that invited him to disobey the Lord prophesied against him and say, you will not return home. And when he left his house, he gave him a donkey for his travels. And on his way, a lion tore him up and left the donkey, didn't touch the donkey. And his carcass was on the side of the road. The lion sat there on his four paws, and the donkey was there right next to them. And that was the end of the man of God who obeyed God, but didn't fully obey God. That's a harsh story, but it's so true. What are we going to do when we hear the voice of the Lord? Peter and the disciples found themselves in the comfort and the security of a boat. And they were crossing the sea. And it was the middle of the night and the storms came and they were blowing this boat left to right, front to back. They were scared. They were terrified on that boat. But that boat at one time was really safe. It felt really secure. I'd rather be in the boat in the middle of the sea than in the sea without a boat in my own strength trying to not drown. But what started off in a comfortable, safe place became a place of turmoil. A storm came and started shaking everything up. And then they saw something across the sea. It looked like a ghost. And the man was walking on the water. You can read this in Mark chapter 14. Because it said the boat was in the middle of the sea. It was tossed by the waves. The wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him on the sea, they were troubled. It is a ghost. They were in fear. Now they didn't know what to think. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, be of good cheer. It is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And there is the opportunity given to man again. What are you going to do when you hear the voice of the Lord? You could stay in your boat that at one time in your life was safe and secure. But when now trouble comes around and now you're hearing the voice of the Lord and he's doing something miraculous and he's telling you to come, are you going to stay in the boat or are you going to dare to take a step of faith and walk on the water with him after hearing the voice of the Lord? 
Because that's the key. The key is that you're hearing the voice of the Lord. It wasn't Peter's bright idea. Oh, let me go walk on water in the midst of this storm. Yeah, bright idea. Only if you heard the Lord. Wasn't a bright idea for Moses to go back to the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, his enemy. He already had slain his servant. That wasn't a bright idea. But because it was the voice of the Lord that spoke to Moses, that makes all the difference. Gideon, you're going to deliver my people. That makes all the difference. It wasn't Gideon's bright idea. He had to hear the Lord. So you understand why in the testimonies, to me, it's so important. It's so encouraging to hear my brother not making quick decisions, but just waiting, waiting, no matter how long it is, waiting. And then when he hears the Lord, he then moves. Because that's how it is to be with the children of God. We need to hear the Lord. We need to move when we hear the Lord. If not for Peter walking on the water, we would have never known what possibilities are not only available to us, but wow, Peter walked on water. If Peter would have stayed in the boat, we would have never known that Peter could have walked on water with Jesus. Did he sink afterward? Sure, but Jesus was there. And it's what I tell some, some you know, saints that come to my house. Listen, you've got to listen to the voice of the Lord. You've got to go and walk according to what you believe that you're hearing, the voice of the Lord. And if you happen to be off, because you love the Lord, he is going to rescue you. So take the step of faith. Because this walk of ours is a walk of faith. There's nothing sure. Did Moses know what was going to be the end result of him going to Pharaoh and telling him, let my people go? He didn't know. Gideon didn't know. Abraham didn't know. They just had to hear the voice of the Lord and make a decision. Am I going to listen to it and obey it and walk by faith or not? And the same is true for all of us. Are you ready to take that risk? So many of our forefathers in the faith have done so from old covenant to new covenant. All of them were just men because they learned to live by faith in the midst of their imperfect circumstances and the fallen state that they were living in. Adam and Eve didn't have a written Bible to follow as a guide. Abraham didn't have a written Bible to follow him or to lead him and guide him. Moses was writing the scriptures down as he was given it to them by the Lord. And Peter wasn't reading the old covenant to realize, oh, I got to get out and walk on the water with Jesus. It isn't easy. I've made mistakes and I sometimes continue to make mistakes. But in order for us to learn how to walk by faith, like a child learning how to walk, we, we, we get up, we, we, we use a couch to help us or a chair, and we brace ourselves, and we take a risk, and we take that wobbly step of faith. And sometimes we fall, and daddy's there to pick us right back up. That's okay. That's okay. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. And now we're all walking like it's a distant memory that we ever even fell. But that's how our faith walk is. So Bishop brought him some good scriptures that I'm just going to repeat. He said to Joshua, actually, Joshua was saying this to the people of God. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and truth. He reiterated, serve the Lord. Because if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, well, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, the power of choice. Whether you're going to serve the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river 
Or are you going to serve the God of the Amorites in whose land you dwell? But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Deuteronomy said it this way in, chap in, in, in chapter 30. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death. I'm giving you the opportunity to choose for yourself blessing or cursing. The Lord implores us, choose life. that both you and your descendants may live. What is it to choose life? Listen to the next verse. That you may love the Lord your God and you will obey his voice. I can't stress it enough. I'm trying to give the inflections. But the most important thing that every man and woman has in this life is that you hear the Lord and you obey him. And you may wobble and you may fall at the beginning, but you need to keep at it. You need a desire. I want to hear you. I want to hear you, Lord. I want to hear you about this. I don't care how big it is. I want to hear you about this. I don't care how little it is. I don't care how insignificant it is. I don't care if it's about my job. I don't care if it's about my relationship with my wife or my children or my friends or any family. I want to hear you in regards to it and then follow your leading and guiding and direction. Because I want to cling to you in Deuteronomy 30, 20. Because you are my life. You are the length of my days. And when I do those things, I know that I will dwell in the land which you have promised to my fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and give to them. I'll leave you with this last example. Maybe you remember there was a, a little, little boy who was offered, given up by his mother to the priest. And he ended up growing up in the house. He's, the mother was so grateful that the Lord answered her promise of a child that she was willing up to give up the promise. Let him be raised in the house of the Lord after the first two years. And, and, and she was just satisfied with that. She was totally content with that. And he ended up living in the house of the Lord and learning about the things of the house of the Lord through the priest and the rest of the priests that were there. And he's learning all of these things, all things good, all things right and well. But when the Lord spoke to that young man, he ran to the priest and the priest said, I didn't call you. Not once, not twice, not twice. I would think it's three times. What was the most important thing that the priest told him? When he speaks to you, respond to him. Here I am, Lord. And then all of a sudden, it's now about, I'm not following the priest. I'm following my God and the voice when he speaks to me. And we know that that man's name was Samuel, and we, he did great and mighty things in the name of the Lord because he learned to listen to the voice of God and follow him. So I leave you with that. I challenge you all with that. Remember, because when you have listened to the voice of the Lord, many of you have many testimonies about how God has come through for you. We've heard him today listening about this house and then declaring and confessing we need to have this house paid and just believing and believing and believing that the Lord is going to somehow bring it to pass and he brought it to pass. So if you don't mind, I will close in prayer as we end our fellowship here. Heavenly Father, we give you praise, we give you thanks, we give you the glory and the honor. Father, you're speaking, and I'm praying that our hearts are open and, and inclined 
to listen for your voice, to hear your instruction and your guidance, because you're going to speak to us things and they're going to be challenging to us. But anytime anyone hears your voice and decides to obey you, that is a challenge because the world is telling us something contrarily different than what you are speaking. And so we need you to strengthen our inner man to obey you. We need you, Father, to touch our hearts and incline them to being obedient to your voice. To listen to your instructions, to be humble, to be open to, to the plans that you have for us. Because we know they are not to harm us, but to give us a future and a hope. Help us, Lord, to humble ourselves. And at the same time that in our humility, you can bring us together in unity, in one mind, in one accord, for your glory. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name. Thus is the ministry of our Father's heart through us. Our utmost desire is to be in the Father's heart, to know the Father's heart and express the Father's heart to you. If you appreciate listening to this podcast and we're blessed, pass it along to someone else by text, email, or word of mouth in the hopes that they might be positively impacted as you were. If you are interested in supporting our efforts, we would ask you to consider the following. One, pray for us. Two, leave a positive rating or review with whomever you listen to our podcast with. And three, if you desire to contribute monetarily, you can do so at paypal.me slash jbenjesus or cash app dollar sign jbenjesus or Venmo jbenjesus. That's J-B-E-N-J-E-S-U-S. God bless.